In this video, we're going to take a look at Unit 7, Lesson 3, Practice Problems. So this one says that line BD is tangent to the circle. So this line here is tangent, meaning it intersects at exactly one point, so B. Um, and then it tells us that the diameter is AB, so splitting the circle in half, going through the center. Explain why the measure of angle BCA is equal to the measure of ABD. So let me just kind of highlight those. So we're looking at this angle. Why is this angle equal to this one? So we know, um, like I said, that a diameter splits the circle in half. So we know that um, this arc right here from A all the way around to B, I should probably pick a different color. Um, so this arc right here all the way around is half the circle. So this arc right here is 180 degrees. So we also know then that this angle here is an inscribed angle because the vertex is on the edge of the circle. And its intercepted arc is right here from A to B, 180 degrees. So the measure of that angle, so the measure of angle ACB equals half of 180. So the inscribed angle is always half of the arc. So we would do 180 divided by two, which gets us 90 degrees for that angle. Then when we take a look at um, the fact that they told us that BD was a tangent line. We also learned in this lesson that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius. So we know that this angle here, the measure of angle ABD equals 90 um, because BD is perpendicular to the radius and by extension um, to the diameter AB. So both of them are 90 degrees, so they are equal. Number two says line AC is perpendicular to the circle centered at O with a radius of one. So we know the radius here, OC, is one and that this um, is a 90 degree angle. The length of AC is 1.5, so we need to find the length of AB. So we can actually um, first find the length of AO by doing the Pythagorean theorem. So we can do, um, we'll just call the pink segment C. So C squared equals 1 squared plus 1.5 squared. So C squared, um, and actually instead of calling it C, let me just call it AO. So we'll just call it AO. So AO squared is equal to 1 um, plus 2.25. So AO squared is equal to 3.25. And then um, we will square root both sides there to figure out how long segment AO actually is. So segment AO is equal to 1.8. So this segment here from A all the way to O is 1.8. Then remember that we know that the radius is one. So this, the measurement from O to B, so from center to edge is one. So to figure out this segment, AB, we'll just do 1.8 minus the radius, and that will give us 0.8 for the measure of AB. Number three, line PD is tangent to the circle. So we've got this line right here is tangent to the circle. The um, circle has a radius of one unit. Okay, so I'll just label one of these as, well, we could label all of them. So OD is one, AO is one, and OC is one. The length of PD is 1.2 inches and the length of AB is 1.7. Those are all labeled. Which point on the circle is closest to point P? So we want to find the closest 
to point P right here. Um, so we can take a look at splitting this into a few right triangles. So let me get this on here. So if we take a look at this right triangle, we can do basically what we did in the last problem to figure out how far, um, what the length of PC is. So we know the legs here. Um, so tangent to a circle means that it is perpendicular to the radius. So we will be able to do the Pythagorean theorem. Um, to find the length of this hypotenuse, and then we'll be able to subtract 1 to get PC. So PO squared is equal to 1 squared plus 1.2 squared. Um, so PO squared is equal to um, 1 plus 1.44. So PO squared is equal to 2.44, and then we'll square root that. So we get that PO is equal to 1.56. So again, that's this whole green segment. So then if we subtract off 1, we will get just this length right here of PC. Okay, so PC is equal to 0.56, meaning that C is 0.56 units away from point P. So now we will repeat this process um, for this larger triangle here. Let me get this drawn. So we'll repeat this for this right triangle. So we've got the diameter with the tangent, which is also perpendicular. So for this one, this length right here is 2. Okay, so we're going to be finding PA, the hypotenuse. So PA squared is equal to um, AD, which is 2, the diameter squared plus um, this length here, 1.2 squared. So we have PA squared equals 4 plus 1.44. Um, and then PA is equal to 5.44. So PA squared. So then square root both sides to solve um, for just PA. So that is 2.33. So now that is this whole segment. So we'll subtract off this 1.7, which is the distance from A to B. And that will give us just the length of PB. So 2.33 minus 1.7 gives us 0.62. And so then we can see that um, C is actually closer. So B is 0.63 away from P and C is 0.56. So P, um, C is closer. Number four, the arc from A to B that doesn't pass through C measures 50 degrees. So from A to B that doesn't go through C, so this arc here, is 50 degrees. Select all statements that are true. So BCA, so BCA, this angle here is 50. That is false because the inscribed angle is half of the intercepted arc. So this angle here is 25 degrees, not 50, which is what part B says. So part B is true. Then BOA, so BOA, this central angle is 50 degrees. That is true. The central angle is equal to the intercepted arc. So this is true. The arc from B to C not passing through A. So B to C not passing through A. So this one right here um, is 180 degrees. False we would need a diameter, okay? So we would need um, for C to go through the diameter to get us a 180 degree arc, and that is not happening, okay? So BC is not a diameter, so that's false. Angle CBO, so angle CBO, so let me get a new color. This angle here, so CBO, um, and COA are congruent. So that is 
um, also not true. So it looks kind of like if we had inscribed angles. But inscribed angles, we have to see them crossing the same intercepted arc. And that's not happening here. So we see that one. And then um, CBO would be here. So they are not crossing that same arc. This one crosses this arc. Okay, so the blue one crosses here. Okay, and the orange one is crossing here. They do not cross the same arc, so we do not know that they are congruent. So this is a false statement. Chords A, C, and D, B intersect at point E. List three pairs of angles that must be congruent. Okay, so we know that if they intercept the same arc, okay, so these two, this angle intercepts arc D, C. So does this angle. Okay, so this angle here and this angle here are congruent to each other. Okay, so let's name those. So angle DAC is congruent to angle DBC because they're both intercepting this same arc DC. So we would have that arc for both of them so they would be congruent. Um, let's look for another, so we need three pairs. <clears throat> so we could also go the backwards version of that using AB as the arc. So we could go ADB, okay, and ACB, okay, those two angles intercept arc AB together. So those are going to be congruent. So angle ADB congruent to angle ACB. And then we also have some vertical angles here, so we could name those two. So angle DEA is congruent to angle CEB. Whoops. So those two vertical angles would be congruent, so that's three. Um, but another one that you could also label would be this vertical angle here to this one. So another option you could have said was angle DEC is congruent to angle um, B, E, A. So any three of those would be fine. Number six, the image shows a circle with diameters A, C, and B, D. Prove that chords B, C, and A, D are congruent. Okay, so how would we show that these two um, chords are congruent? So let me get this drawn on here. All right, so we've got AC as a diameter. And so what we know about that is that this is a radius and this is a radius. Then they also tell us that um, BD, okay, so from B to D is a diameter. So this is a radius and this is a radius. And we know all the radii in the circle are congruent. So I'm going to mark them all with one tick mark. So now what we want to show is that um, BC, so this segment here, and AD are congruent. So we want to be able to show that. So you can kind of see that you've got some congruent or some triangles happening there. So if we could prove that these two triangles were the same size, then we would know that AD and BC would have to be equal as well. And so um, we can definitely prove that these two angles are congruent by vertical angles. Okay, so let's say all of these things. So let's say that side AE is congruent to side EC um, because they are radii of the same circle. Then we also know that, um, let's do vertical angles next. So now we also put in these vertical angles. So angle AED is congruent to angle CEB because they're vertical angles. And then we also know that um, DE is congruent to EB because they are radii. 
And then this is enough to prove that the two triangles are congruent. So triangle AED, so I went the orange segment to the green segment and then closed, um, is congruent to the orange segment to green, so CEB, by side, angle side. Therefore, since the triangles are congruent, we know that their corresponding parts are congruent. So then we know that AD is congruent to BC because they are um, corresponding parts of congruent triangles. So they must be congruent. All right, number seven, the line represented by y plus three equals negative three times the quantity x plus six is transformed by this rule. So if you remember when x and y both map to their opposites, this is a 180 degree rotation. Whoops. So a 180 degree rotation will take lines parallel to themselves. So the slope here is negative three, so the transformation is gonna keep the same slope since the lines will be parallel with a 180 degree rotation. Um, so D will be our answer. I kind of covered up that negative, but so D is negative three, same slope. 